Good morning everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in Thursday of the fourth week of Lent. Our text is taken from John chapter 5 verse 18 and then verses 31 to 47. I have entitled today's teaching, Jesus in the Dock. So let's see the text. For this reason the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him because he was not only breaking the Sabbath but was also calling God his own father thereby making himself equal to God. And then verses 31. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf and I know that his testimony to me is true. You send messengers to John and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I see these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John, the works that the Father has given me to complete the very works that I am doing testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form. And you do not have his word abiding in you because you do not believe him whom he sent, whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come to my father's, I have come in my father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not see glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you because before the father, your, sorry, do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? The Gospel of the Lord. Before I begin, I must apologize that sometimes I'm tending to fumble with the text, not because... Um, because I, because of the Bell's palsy, the muscles around the eye kind of give me trouble, and I see a bit of double vision. I think it's time I will have to now uh, print a larger text <laughs> for myself. But that's the burden God puts on each one of us, and I still struggle with um, a bit of sight. Anyway, so let's come to the text. Now, yesterday uh, we saw Jesus began his keynote speech in yesterday's gospel. Today, he will end it by presenting us with his testimony and his credentials. Surely, after declaring that he was equal to God, the Jews would have demanded that Jesus present, give us some evidence as proof that you are equal to God, proof of your claim. Now, in the face of such criticism, Jesus presents his testimony. In order to clearly understand this text, which is a little heavy to read as well as heavy to understand, one must be at least faintly familiar with the Jewish legal system and this is very, very important. Understanding the Jewish legal system in order to understand how Jesus is going to give us his testimony. Now, Schnackenberg, um, who is a great uh, scholar, tells us that the Jewish legal procedure was not based on the interrogation of the accused, but on the examination of the witnesses. Yeah? So the examination of those who were witnesses were far more important than do I put you in, uh, in a court of law in the dock and then question the accused. The accused was not, didn't play an important role. The witnesses played a far greater role. Now keep that at the back of your mind. Also, Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15 also stipulated 
that no one could testify on their own behalf. A charge that the Jews bring against Jesus, uh, we see this in chapter 8 verse 13. At the same time, no accused could be convicted on the witness of one person. Now, in his book, Jesus on Trial, A. E. Harvey makes a very interesting observation. In situations where there was only one witness, the court would simply have to make up its mind whether to take the accused person's word or not. Now, for such a self-testimony, they might require an oath on the ground that God would punish the person if he lied on oath. We see this from in Genesis chapter 31 verse 50. Because Jesus appeals to his father's testimony, he is in essence providing such an oath. He says, I am taking an oath. Now, Jesus fulfills, if you listen carefully to what I have said so far, he fulfills both the requirements. Remember that you had to give more than one uh, witness. He provides three testimonies and he also makes a statement of oath with the father as his witness. So Jesus provides for both, whatever the Jewish legal system asks, you could do either this or this, Jesus says I will give you both. So Jesus begins by testifying about himself. It is not that his testimony is not true as he says in verse 31 but that the Jews do not consider it to be true. So he goes on to his second witness and the second witness he gives it as John the Baptist. Now interestingly Jesus refers to John if you uh, go through your text especially verse 35 he refers to John as the burning and the shining lamp. Notice he calls John the lamp. Why does he call him the lamp? Because Jesus is the light. I am the light of the world. So he calls John the burning lamp, the shining lamp. Now, Jesus accuses the Jewish authorities for their happiness over a human sign, although they had happiness only for a short while. They said, he said, you all rejoiced in this, in this human sign of John the Baptist. He very clearly says, you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. Finally, Jesus calls upon his third witness. And who is his third witness? He says, my father is the third witness. The witness of the father is given in three ways. In three ways. Let's look at it. Now, through Jesus' works, like the healing of the cripple, which should have been a testimony enough, and we saw that just before this, in chapter 5, verse 1, the healing of the cripple, that should have been testimony enough. So that's one. Through the voice of the Father, which the Jews reject, that's two. And finally, through the scriptures, which the Jews study and yet they fail to find in it the truth about Jesus. So three things you'll see very clearly. Look at your Bibles now. But I have a testimony greater than John. So Jesus turns to his Father. One. The first testimony, he says, is the works that the Father has given me. And I give you the example of the cripple. Two, and the Father who sent me on himself has testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form. And three, sorry, three is the scriptures. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that testify on my behalf. So clearly we see Jesus provides the father and you get very clearly three examples. Now, the Jerome's biblical commentary places this entire debate so well when it says, on one side humans judged and condemned Jesus since they reject those whom he brings forward as witnesses because the Jews reject all these three witnesses of Jesus. On the other side, Jesus' word is the trial and condemnation of an unbelieving world since those who testify on his behalf are in fact true. Now the Jews always believed that Moses was the, the paraclete, Greek for 
called in aid that is what paraklete means. It is a Greek word to mean when you call somebody to your aid. So, for the Jews Moses was the paraclete, the advocate who intercedes for the Jewish people day and night. To the shock of the Jews if you notice Jesus now tells them that the advocate they hoped will now become their own accuser. See verse 45, do not think that I will accuse you before the father. Your accuser is Moses on whom you have set your hope. Very clearly. Now this begs the question, what proof do we require to believe in the son of God? How much more will we try the patience of our God? You know to conveniently cling to a backup plan of appealing to God's mercy at the hour of our death. As if we would use God's mercy as a cheat card to get into heaven is a very foolish game plan. The God of mercy is a God of mercy. But always remember that mercy is not devoid of justice. Today I uh, want to pray for my dear friend Vinay Pinto. Uh, I hope he will watch this video today. Um, Vinay and I were in, um, in school together. Uh, our friendship goes back many, many years. I used to play as a young child in, uh, in his compound on bandstand, they would live in that building Windermere and um, many years later when I was a priest in Malad East, Vinay and his wonderful wife Rashmi came to my help. We wanted to start a dispensary in Shanti Nivas which at that time was in the literally in the slums and uh, I remember the 1st of Jan, I do not remember the year, uh, Vinay and his wife and his son Ahan now a nice grown up boy studying in America, his parents Annette and Billy and Bishop uh, Percival all came together and we blessed that dispensary which when we built the new church of St. Jude's uh, we shifted it and that dispensary still runs thanks to the kindness and the love and the compassion of Vinay and his family. We continue to get our medications uh, each month for those in the ashram, those in the neighborhood. Uh, through the generosity and the kindness of Vinay. Thank you Vinay for your love, for caring for the home, uh, for trusting in us and sharing of your, uh, of your goodness uh, with our home. I know I am embarrassing you by telling, uh, telling you, telling the whole world what you do, but I believe there are many, many good Catholics who in their own way reach out in love, in kindness. So have a happy birthday my friend. To all of you who celebrate your birthday today on the 31st of March as we close this month, God bless you. We step into April tomorrow and uh, the heat is on as they say. The, it's really been uh, a hot month of, um, of March. So let me give you all a blessing today. The Lord be with you and may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray for me, pray for my eye and for my cheek and I am really struggling some days, uh, keep me in your prayers also. God bless you.